Hi everyone, my name is Patrick Kakeo, and if you're interested in open source communities, meetups, DevRel, and more, this episode is for you. Joining me today is Alessandro Vozza. He's DevRel at Solo.io, an organizer and founder of the Kubernetes Community Days in Amsterdam. And we had a blast of a conversation. I'll put all his socials in the description below. Check him out. And with that being said, enjoy the episode. Beyond coding. Good stuff. So you went on you went on vacation in Italy? Puglia. Me too. I just uh, came I, back last uh, last week. No way. Yeah, yeah. Wait, I was in. Uh, you, <laughs> I, you I'm from week? there. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we. So it's my one of my best friend. Yeah. Got married in Amsterdam last year, and uh, me and my friends we always go every year. We go to a villa. Okay. Uh, we are like twenty, twenty five. Yeah. More. That's a lot. More. And we stay in this villa. We play music. We all DJs, right? So. Oh, we, really. <laughs> uh, and so this year we decided to do the villa. With a wedding, okay. So I got I got married in uh, in this beautiful masseria in Puglia, yeah. and uh, we were uh, yeah, like forty people. Oh wow! Yes, awesome. So, uh, and I drove all the way there. Yeah, really, from here. From here, it's yes. like a two day drive, no? Three days drive to wow. go, two days to come back. But it's beautiful. It's, you go through the best part of Europe, right? I can so imagine. Germany, yeah. Austria, north of Italy. We stop. We have fun. Awesome. And it, it was quite hot. Did you drive with the group as well? They all drove. I drove. To go down, I drove with my two best friends. Yeah. Uh, and to come back, I drove with my wife. Yeah. So best. <laughs> that's awesome. Travel man. companions ever. So, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I just came back last Saturday, actually. Okay. Yeah. We're in Puglia? I, I'm not sure where we stayed. I mean, I visited okay. Ostuni. Ostuni. Ostuni is beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Lecce? Uh, Lecce, I'm not, close I'm not to quite Ostuni, sure. But I'll show you some pictures after, because right, okay. I, I usually take a lot of pictures and then I see on the map where I was. It's so cool because I'm from Puglia. Of yeah. course, like everybody denigrates his own place, right? So I, I, I don't think Puglia is that cool. But yeah. then people told me this the paradise on earth is like it was a, amazing. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. pretty nice. Apparently, so we made a, we did a pasta making class, and apparently I, I have a natural uh. talent for making orecchiette. 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 <laughs> uh, so many memories of my mother making yeah. orecchiette with the. Um, you take a fork. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with a knife. With a knife, yeah. With a knife, you make it. Okay. It's, it's so beautiful. It's yeah. so, so, it, I grew up there. I can right? imagine. Yeah, yeah. I'm from Taranto. It's okay. the south coast. Yeah. Which is the best part, of course. Yeah, of course. It's, <laughs> uh, it's the Mediterranean part. Then there's the Adriatic part. Yeah. But I'm from the Mediterranean. So um, from my from Taranto, on a clear day, you can see the coast of Tunisia. Yeah, really? Yes. That's it's insane. Uh, it's insane. Yeah, it's uh, so such a beautiful place. But then, of course, like I, I grew up there. I think like it's... It's not cool, but yeah. my Everyone friends all love it. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we had so so good time. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We did uh, the pasta making class was a lot of fun. We did wine tasting as well. Mm-hmm. That was a lot of fun, and otherwise just a lot of beaches and a lot of good food. Yeah, and what more do you want from a vacation? Yes, yeah. Th- these infinite fields of olive trees. Yeah, right? so that that's the typical uh, landscape of Puglia, right? So I saw that. Yeah, yeah. and those Tuni, Albello Bello. Yeah, scene. Uh, uh, we we've talked about it because the the pasta making. Uh, the person that facilitated that talked a lot about Albero Bello mm-hmm. and the Trulis. The Trulis. She had one because we were in in one making pasta. Okay. Um, and then she said, if you really want to see all the Trulis, go to Albero Bello. Yes. Yeah. It's a, it's a place where Greek culture and East culture yeah. combines. In Bari, the capital, there are some churches with minarets. Mm. So the churches are in sp- from 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 the from the. Asian uh, culture. Yeah. So it, it's Puglia is a place of uh, very uh, a lot of mixes, right? Yeah. So there's a Spanish influence, the Romans, the, the Greeks, all together in in Puglia. So, I, uh, I it's, saw it's a lot of cool. like Greek similarities. Now that yes, you say yes. it, Taranto <laughs> takes its name from Taras, the son of Poseidon. Yeah. Uh, we were one of the most important Greek ports. And uh, and the culture is is from there, you know. It's uh, yeah. we, we we are all Mediterranean. It was a, it's a it's a great, very rich history, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm proud to be from there. I mean, I'm uh, actually cool. from all the places. Uh, yeah, uh, it's it's a good place to be from. That is such uh, a coincidence. Yeah. You were there two weeks ago, then, or one yeah, week ago from, as well. Uh, I we left the f- se- the first of July. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I I left maybe the day before you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So. Good stuff, man. I was thinking about driving, and then I was like, oh, it's two days, that's a lot. It's a lot, but yeah. it's you really go through Europe. And yeah, it's beautiful. amazing. You see the, the changes, right? You, you go through Germany, and then all of a sudden there are mountains, and it's Austria, 
Yeah. And it's Sud Tirol, Tirol and uh, Sud Tirol. And we stop in, Bo- in Bolzano, in Bozen. Yeah. Amazing place. And then we continue to Bologna. And you can see the whole, uh, the whole landscape. It's yeah. uh, gradually changing towards the beach and the, <laughs> and the flat of, of Puglia. Yeah. So it's really cool. I'm, I'm going to pitch it. Yes. Next time <laughs> to uh, maybe my group of friends, a yeah. tourist uh, attraction in Puglia. Maybe, maybe. But you, you were born and raised there, and how did you end up in Amsterdam? Uh, oh, okay, of course. <laughs> <For love. laughs> yeah, yeah. The best reason is for love. So yeah. of course, I, I met my ex-wife now in in, uh, in Ferrara, in the north of Italy. Yeah. Um, at the time, I was studying chemistry. Chemistry. Mm. I'm a I'm a chemist by education. So I met my ex-wife. Uh, um, she used to live in Utrecht, yeah. and I really wanted to be a professor at the time. I okay. wanted to continue the academic career. Yeah. So I found a PhD at the University of Amsterdam. So we moved to to Amsterdam to get yeah, me to get my PhD in chemistry. Yeah. And there to to work in uh, restoration. She she's an architect, restoring old houses on the canals. It's a very very cool job. And so I moved to get my PhD in chemistry and to 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 stay with my ex-wife now. So. Yeah. And then I really fell in love, and I have been here since. And uh, I changed my career. So when I finished my PhD in chemistry, I moved to to IT. Yeah, and never looked back. So why Why did you make the move then? And that was when you were already here. Yeah, Amsterdam. yeah, but uh, I've been around. Open, I, I'm one of. I'm 47, by the way. Mm-hmm. So uh, when I was eight. My brother was 12, yeah. we got a Com- Commodore 64. Okay. And that changed our yeah. life, right? It's like a, one of these moments. I heard that like so a, many times. It's like yes. Commodore 64, that was the, that I'm was the moment. I'm one of those generations. I don't yeah. know if we have a name, but the <laughs> Commodore 64, Amiga. Yeah. Uh, my brother was very much involved in the demo scene. Mm. It was it was the best time to be, you know, it was so full of possibilities, right? Yeah. So New we possibilities. Were, yes, because it, it, Everything was new. People yeah. were, you know, like uh, creating these amazing demos and uh, uh, hacking around. And uh, there was like a demo them, right? So there was no internet, there was nothing. So we saw it uh, uh, appearing on the scene. So, so my brother was involved in the BBS scene. I don't know if you know what no, it no, is. No, no, no clue. A BBS. What is that? Um, um, a bulletin board system. Okay. So before. Is that the thing with the pins? No, no, no. So, so before the internet, yeah. there was the BBS. So it was a server, a system, a computer connected yeah. to a dial-up uh, line, yeah. like just a phone. So you were supposed to, you called this computer, you download the latest message in the forum. It's like, like a forum, right? So you could do also games and uh, interact with other users. Yeah. You were downloading the latest updates, uploading your own, like re- your replies, and that's it. Okay. And then another person would do the same. Yeah. And so on and so forth until you establish like a like a community around this BBS. Okay. And it was the the beginning of what is today the open source. So people were exchanging, of course, also cracked uh, software, yeah, uh, illegal software, but also just talking. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was amazing. So there were um, BBS in my own town about. Uh, it, it was 1980, 1990. Okay. There was the war. Uh, there were wars in uh, in the Persian Gulf. It was an interesting time for yeah. politics. So people were talking about how to uh, how to promote some political ideas like peace, right? So and they were all happening around this BBS. Okay. And it was an amazing time. So awesome. And then I saw it, you know, then we saw the internet coming up, the www, the web. It's, uh, I was there. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's something that I, I, little kids, of course. Yeah. And they don't know this. Right? They, they just have this ready made internet, in, interconnected network of computers. Yeah. And, but there was a time when you had to call in, upload your stuff, wait for uh, the stuff to download. It was a it was an interesting time. So, I can imagine. Yeah. And you took that. I mean, that was kind of your childhood and growing up. You yeah. kind of experienced that growing up in a way. Yeah. And then is that also what inspired you to make kind of that switch from chemistry? Yeah. And uh, education. So my origin story. <laughs> I have a story. So if you have a minute, uh, <laughs> which is uh, quite I mean interesting. So chemistry. So yeah. I moved to the north of Italy to study. Yeah. To university, right? So now in chemistry you have to learn one programming language, which is Fortran. Okay. 
for some reason. Fortran is very good for mathematical computation. It's part of the curriculum. Yeah. So it was my first year and there was a room full of computers and my professor was supposed to teach Fortran, but they were all broken and they didn't work and they were running Windows uh -huh. 3.11. So it was <coughs> a mess. So my professor, was very, she was very frustrated. So one day I decided, yeah. without, uh, with nobody no told one, no me, one told you. Uh, to fix everything. So I took a computer, the okay. most powerful. I put some extra RAM in it. I took, uh, I cannibalized other computers. I connected to the university network. Yeah. I downloaded Linux, Slackware 0.9, yeah. 24 floppy disks. <laughs> and start to, so I created a server and I made the other computers like client to this okay. server. So I share folders, NFS, all sorts of stuff. So my professor was, was delighted she could finally yeah, teach yeah. Fortran. You made it work. Uh, so everybody was happy. And then two or three days later, the the people from the network, uh, the sysadmin of the University of Ferrara, they came down. They were like, whoa. And they said, who are you? <laughs> what are you doing? Because <laughs> I figure out all the network IPs, the CIDRs and stuff. And then they, instead of kicking me out and uh, expelling me from, uh, yeah. from the university, they made me sysadmin of the chemistry department. Good stuff. So I started there. That's where I started my my open source interest. I was part of the the Linux user group yeah. uh, of Ferrara. Of my own, every major city had a Linux user group. We were uh, helping people switching from Windows to to Linux. Yeah. So we we own one of the few DVD ROM in town. So we were asking people to come, and uh, uh, we would help them uh, installing open source software. Yeah. We also uh, petitioned the uh, the city council to move to open source because why would you use closed technologies for yep. public service? There's no there's no reason, right? So everything should be open. Uh, and that was a yeah early 2000. Mm. Fast forward 16 years later, I joined Microsoft. Of course, that was a, <laughs> of course. That was a, not because I changed. I was yeah. always been around open source. I will always be around open source. I think it's the best way to develop software. Mm. It's probably also a very good business model. Now there's a whole uh, debate about REL and SUSE and so yeah. on, and William has some, William Rizzo, my friend, so has opinion on it. But um, it's, it's also a very viable commercial model. Right? Yeah. So, so open source is my my main thing. And so 16, year, 16 years later, I joined Microsoft, not because I changed, because they changed. Yeah, right? I was gonna so say. They came around to... Uh, to see the light and to to under to recognize the 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 driving force of open source, and that is a very good influence on on the world. Like I think it, it's a, it's a it's a better world because people come together to build software yeah. and then give it back to to the communities like this. So I agree. Uh, so I, I, touched, I touched on that with William as well. I I love open source. I love where it's going. But there's also some concerns with kind of the maintenance of open source or mm. kind of the availability. Like it's a it's a great thing, but the people that become responsible of kind of maintaining that, sometimes mm -hmm. that can be a bottleneck as well. And there's nothing that facilitates it and makes it sustainable for people to do so. Because all of a sudden it could be like a second job to some people, but it doesn't have any income or any incentive other than giving back knowledge-wise and software-wise. No, but I think it should be treated as human heritage yeah. right so this is what this is part of our uh, heritage as, as 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 a species in a way right so this software is what makes us work and uh, produce and uh, it's everywhere uh, make the society tick right yeah. so that so it needs to be protected mm -hmm. like like colosseum or uh, you know like uh, something that, that that belongs to everybody yeah. and should be protected so the governments and uh, society as lar at large should step in and do something about it. Yeah. Uh, you think that's where it's going as well? Yes. So, mm. <laughs> disclaimer, <laughs> I'm a long-time communist. Yeah. So, uh, what stands in the way of many other things, not just open source, but also in the way of survival of the planet itself, is capitalism. Okay. Is profit-driven interest, right? Yeah. So. If everything is profit, then of course there's uh, there's less uh, space for for these things like open source. So I think the the trend is to overcome the limitation of uh, capitalism of pure profit yeah. and go towards a a world where people collaborate more. And they, they, 
I, I don't think I'm going to see it, <laughs> but maybe my grandchildren will see this world where people collaborate, people help each other without the, the um, profit like as, as, as a first thing. Yeah, so yeah. that's... Uh, I'm, I, I'm an optimist and idealist. <laughs> Just still, at 47 is pretty pretty good, right? So yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I I like that, right? Because I've done, I I had to do a lot of psychological assessments because I'm mm -hmm. I'm uh, part of a group that's now team leads within Xebia, and out of there, the assessment said I'm a team player. Like that was one of the one of the biggest factors there. Is I've always been a team player, so I like co-creation, like working together, I like consensus even, which is kind of mm -hmm. be a challenge being team lead sometimes as well. But working together has always been a big component in software engineering. I didn't know that at first, but it is what I've experienced, right? Working together in a project. If you don't know, dare to ask a question and figuring out, figuring it out together, right? Building up that confidence as a team to be able to kind of solve any problem in a way as well. And that's also kind of factoring in open source where people come together. Sometimes some person kind of fire starts it or kick starts it. Other people come in and collaborate and co-create with that. And then that artifact is probably going to be there for a really long time, right? And I think we're kind of still, I don't know if it's the forefront, but it still feels like the forefront because we're creating things and the people that have created it are still there. But at some point, the things that we've created open source-wise or software-wise are going to exist. And the people that have created it or even contributed to it might not anymore which is a very interesting thing, I think, because right now there's maintainers and there's groups of maintainers. And if those cease to exist, then yeah, the software might cease to exist as well. But a lot of crucial components of businesses or organizations might rely on that open source software then. That's true. We are more than the sum of the parts, right? Yeah. So because we, we are together, there's the emergence of these properties uh, like, like software. So I don't know, there's no answer yet, but yeah. There is a there is a in open source there is a maintainer problem. I think we should make maintaining software more fun or mm. sexy or something re rewarded, right? So celebrate yeah. the people that maintain the software instead I, of. I think uh, it's admirable, uh, yeah, for sure, but it's not really celebrated or something like that. I, I think it's a personal opinion. I don't think it's a general one. Yeah, it's it's tricky. I think it's business should step in, right? So the, yeah, I personally donate to specific projects on GitHub yep. through GitHub sponsors. I really just set like the, the monthly payment and that's uh, and the project I believe in or the, the one that I want to help. Yeah. Business, they should put some budget. Maybe it's time for, for budgeting, you know, yeah. open source contributions. It's, yeah, you're uh, seeing that. Yeah. I mean, you're seeing that as well. I think if, if an organization does that, a community looks at them differently also. Way different, yeah. Which could yeah, be... So like there's not really a financial incentive, there's more of a like giving back incentive. And organizations already do that, right? With mm -hmm. artifacts like blogs or yeah. going to conferences, right? Sharing knowledge is one of the artifacts of an course. organization can do to give back and contributing to open source or giving a financial incentive in that way uh, can be one as well. Yeah, definitely. There's this rise of foundations now, <laughs> right? So the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And yeah. the, of course, they all started with the Linux Foundation, the Apache Foundation. And now there's a foundation for everything, the green ops <laughs> and the, the green software foundation and the FinOps foundation. Yeah. But there's a, I see it as a positive trend, right? So there are people from the industry, players, uh, end users, vendors coming yeah. together to take care of software in a more democratic way. Mm. There's nothing to, to hate about it. I mean, it's actually... And the, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, which I'm an humble ambassador, yeah. I pride myself on being a part of, of the foundation, I mean, as a, as a contributor, um, it's growing a lot. I mean, it grew from nothing. It's going fast. Yes, from there was no foundation seven years ago. Yeah. And today is, uh, it's, it's pretty large. I mean, Kubecon Amsterdam, 10,000 people, one of the largest uh, conference in, in EMEA. Uh, yeah. So it's... Uh, uh, We'll, uh, is again, I don't know why, but it was great to be alive when I was, you know, tinkering with the BBS. Yeah. And I feel still like it's the best time now that we are seeing this, right? So we are yeah. seeing this emergence of um, this cloud native software and so so much. So I don't know. I'm, I'm just lucky that every every moment of my life has been great to be alive. Yeah. Right? So that's the 
I think that's the most healthy and best mindset is the best time to be alive is right now. Is right now, yeah. yes. Yeah. So make use of it. <laughs> yes, with AI and um, all sorts of technological advancement that it's mind blowing really. If you look what what we were just a few years ago yeah. and what is today, nobody can predict what is going to happen in the future. And I'm, I'm an optimist. I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't think AI will destroy humanity. Yeah. If properly handled, <laughs> of course. Like again, if you put profit first, then yes, it's not gonna unlock the full potential yeah. of AI. But I think it's uh, we, we can come together. I'm again optimism, right? So yeah, yeah. I, I think I mean the way you explain kind of being at the forefront of a lot of things in your childhood. I feel like AI and what we're seeing right now, right now, I feel like we're at the forefront of a lot of things. And I hope that tens of years from now. 20 of years from now, I don't think that's the same. 20 years from now, we can talk back and say like, okay, this was really the starting point and these are the things we saw and this is how it, this was kind of the trajectory. Yeah. Trajectory. Have you read the book, um, The Better Angels of Our Nature from Steven Pinker? No. So the world is getting better and better. I mean, yeah. I know that feels not. It yeah. feels like, ah, this is, going all everything is going down but this is the best time to be alive for a human yeah if you have to choose a pick pick a uh, historical either you should it's pick right this now. one now is the future <laughs> yes and so so you can also learn from what happened when internet was released right so when there was a very a, a good decade of amazing time right? people were coming together discussing things Lots of business built around. Now I think we are a bit going down. So mm. there's dominance of this big social network, big yeah. uh, social network, social media companies, which is probably kind of betraying the original idea behind connecting people. Yeah, replacing it with just pure business interest, pure uh, commercial interest. But I think that there's going to be a second wave of. Like uh, feel good and uh, connecting people together, raising the conditions of humans all over the world. Yeah, that will, that's the the goal of uh, technology, in a way, right? So yeah, that's why we do this, right? So to to improve lives everywhere. I agree. Now that that should always be the goal. And if you notice that the goal is make as much money as possible, and if that's your environment, I think the people that are contributing to that suffer then. Are definitely going to feel the tail end of it because there's going to be decisions where you're like, no, 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 this is the best decision, right, for the people, and then the organization's going to be like, no, 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 this is the best decision for us, yeah. and then you're going to be like, ah, okay, maybe this is not the environment for me. Yes, yeah. but until we all come together. So I'm, um, um, I'm also, of course, like uh, I love unions. Mm. I think we as engineers we have a real power to change things, yeah. to influence things. So we, we can actually sit at the table of our companies and tell them, uh, and um, there's a thing called the Tech Worker Coalition. Okay. It's American, but yeah. it's also pretty active in Berlin. And uh, uh, there was a chapter. So it's a union of tech workers. Okay. It's, if you think about it, it's an amazing idea. So, and... They were uh, they were famous um, famously Google was gonna participate in some uh, Department of Defense contract. Okay. And Google engineers they told them they told their managers you can win the contract but we're not gonna help you yeah. writing software for uh, guided mi missiles or uh, to yeah. kill people. And that forced Google to actually withdraw from uh, from the competition because yeah. so this is better than there's always this myth you can vote with your wallet. Mm -hmm. You can just don't buy Amazon, right? Yeah. That's hard. And, uh, yeah. And <laughs> there's so many people anyway buying from them. Yeah. But as a, as a worker, as an engineer, somebody that, you know, can write AI code and uh, software, you do have uh, power. Yeah. You can say, no, I'm not going to write this. Yeah, I'm not going to work on this. And the techworkercoalition.org it's um, I'm part of it, and uh, it's pretty cool stuff. I yeah. can imagine. Yeah, yeah I like think, on, okay. on kind of my micro scale and, and my history, I've done that before, where I'm like, I'm not building this. Mm. Basically, like I, it might be from an ethics standpoint, it might be from a principle standpoint, where I disagree so much that I'm like, hey, if you want this, someone else has to do it. And I've said that in that way, and that did make people realize or rethink kind of their ways. 
Mm. Like, huh, maybe maybe we shouldn't do this in that way. And that kind of created a movement where we actually ended up doing something else instead. But if you don't take a stand like that, then things are never going to change. Uh, yeah. Um, if people don't change, nothing changes. Exactly. Uh, it, it, it starts from, from, from us, right? Yeah. So and our work is it's important, right? So we, we spend a lot of time at work. We can really make a difference. So again, like... I'm an optimist. So I know. <laughs> I, I think we can do it. So there's no reason not to. So. Yeah, good stuff, man. Yeah, so. I, I was thinking about kind of your history because you're a chemist, more so in education, then became sysadmin and eventually joined Microsoft. Yeah. Was that kind of more sysadmin stuff as well? Was that software engineering? What was that? Uh, so I'll let you in a secret. I don't code. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know any pro programming language. It's it's my thing. Yeah, but. Give me a Terraform code. Give me some YAML. Um, I feel very good comfortable. To go. Yeah, so, so yeah. I've always been a sysadmin. Like uh, I, I, I build my own PCs, right? So it's, yeah. uh, and then I run Linux on it. And I have a closet full of computers and old computers and Nooks and uh, NAS drives. I have my own cluster, uh, Kubernetes cluster at home. Yeah. Uh, so I've always been uh, that, that side of the... Um, there was this thing like that. Even in Microsoft at the beginning, there was like IT ops okay. and devs. And, uh, yeah, but kind of the split yeah, there. Yeah, but that's... Of course, with the old, the old DevOps movement, it's about like uh, breaking the barriers. And yeah. we're all trying to... Make uh, make a living and, uh, and, and create try something to work cool. together. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's uh, and ten years ago I started the DevOps meetup for yeah. this reason because I it resonated with me a lot. It's like a, why why there's why we have difference. You know, we we are meant to work together. Yeah. Uh, paraphrasing um, Marcus Aurelius, uh, you know Stoicism. No, a bit. Okay. I mean, it's the, on the, my list. The, yeah, yeah, it's uh, the the. Um, by the way, I'm a stoic, so that's why I, I like to quote Marcus Aurelius. We are meant to work together like the upper and lower uh, line of teeth. Mm. So we, yeah. IT and uh, ops and dev, they, they are just meant to work together. So that's uh, that resonated me, with me a lot. So uh, it was early in my career, 10 years ago, more or less. So I started DevOps Meetup Amsterdam. Yeah. And... I blow my mind. I mean, organizing meetups, it was all my, it became my, one of my passion. Mm. And I still do. Yeah, I, I saw that. What about it made it become like a passion? Like what, what did it do for you yeah. as kind of the organizer? So I always thought, okay, I'm not great at programming. I mean, what can I do yeah. to contribute? Yeah. I can do this. I can get people together in a room, uh, I can organize it, find speakers, find venues, and yeah. then order pizza, and then let people talk to each other. Mm. So that's my contribution. Had you done that before? No, I started 10 years ago, yeah, yeah. with this uh, with thing. I had no, uh, no clue like, what I'll to do. do. It. Yeah, I was <laughs> in between jobs, and I said, I don't, I'm a bit bored. Yeah. I saw this meetup.com. It was very different. There were way less communities like yeah, this. Yeah. And uh, so I started DevOps Meetup. Um, first meetup I know I remember there was ING, so they, they were everybody was really eager to That's learn good. and uh, and I always thought, okay, I'm doing this right. So how do I know I'm doing it right? Yeah, the only way is like talk to people, confront myself, so so I can you know I have some metric to 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 know that I'm doing right. So that's that's what I. That's all my. That's my driving force. Like uh, I want to know if this is the right way. Yeah. And I talk to people. So that's uh, that made me kind of force me to be an extrovert. Yeah. Of course, I've always been an introvert, like most people. But that kind of made me. I forced myself to to speak and to talk. So mm. that's uh, that was pretty pivotal moment in my career. Yeah. So that's uh, that was cool. That's yeah. awesome. What yeah. what was like? I mean, you've organized a lot of meetups. What was like the biggest like proud moment that you've had while organizing meetups? Well, is it always like the attendees, the speakers, is the content, or what makes you really proud of like yeah, so, organizing meetups? So meetups are the best place to learn public speaking, mm. right? So because it's very forgiving. It's yeah. just, just it's, it's okay if you make a mistake, it's, nobody's gonna laugh at you and they usually, nobody laughs. But I help people coming to the meetup. I, you know, I encourage them, come to the meetup and do that. Try your your talk there, yeah. And it happened. So I saw many people 
starting at the meetup and then becoming and then going on and it, it kind of addictive in a way right? so yeah then yeah. Uh, it can't stop and now the, maybe some of them are speaking at kubecon or uh, they, they went on and ever uh they they are they are changed right so yeah. they, they i help them uh, i made the condi- i created the condition i didn't help them a lot but i create the condition so people can have a safe space yeah to express themselves and if they want to speak they can do it yeah. Uh, and also the connection, right? So that's uh, so uh, the meetups. We have one tonight, by the way. So <laughs> at CBR <laughs> office. So, so yeah, Good keep stuff. doing it. Yeah. The talks are important. You are there to learn and to, of course. But the the magic happens after the talk mm-hmm. when people stand up, have a drink, have a slice of pizza together, and they just uh, just engage, right? So it's uh, I, I, so I play the bass. I'm okay. a bass player. Yeah. Now the bass player is the guy that st- stays in the back. Yeah, you know, and then but without the bass, there is no music. You know, it, you, if it's not there, you will notice. But mm. if it's there, you, you don't notice it. It's just there, right? It's so not to, in the forefront. Yeah. So that's my role. I like to be the guy in the back, organizing, uh, making it happen, but not being the front stage. Yeah, I do like public speaking, of course, but I I like to organize things. So, that's awesome. Man. Yeah, I'm, I get I get. A, thrill from uh, oh there's a good event everybody's happy everybody's smiling yeah and that's my 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 jam so that's a job yeah. well done yeah exactly how do you because this is something i'm struggling with myself is i meet a lot of people but i'm i don't put in the effort to kind of maintain those connections hmm. and i have a feeling that you do because a lot of people i've had on yeah. william Rizzo is one of them bart yeah. farrell i mean you recommended him to me and he recommended you as well. Thank you. They all they all recommend <laughs> I, you. They'll talk about it. I bar. <laughs> it's I like, yeah, <laughs> like you you keep maintaining these connections, I feel yeah. like. How how do you do that? It's it's just think about people, right? So mm. when, when I think about somebody, I just send a send a message. It's hard. I know you think ah, maybe they are busy. Yeah. Everybody's busy, so it's not, <laughs> it's not it's, I'm busy. But uh, it's like I do it with my friends as well. Check in. Yeah. You know, like hey, how are you doing? Can what you're working on, th- this kind of things. It's, it's the little things. Mm. It's I know it's there's no it's not like programming yeah. that you have a syntax and it's very clear what you have to do with people. It's all messy. Yeah. So uh, try to put them, st- listen to them, and try to put your at the same level with them. That's it. That's that's the best thing. You don't be humble. That's yeah. uh, that's my that's my approach. But yeah, it's uh, it's all different. I have to say, like uh, some many of these people, like William, yeah. uh, didn't I had no I didn't know him before. We organized KCD Kubernetes Community Days Amsterdam together, yeah. and kind of you know like you click. Yeah. That's it. So I can call him a friend now. It's uh, we, we talked uh, not every day, but we talk very often. So so that's a, that's a good thing. Good uh, stuff. You yeah. don't have a system; they're just more top of mind, no? Yeah, maybe yeah. it's Italians, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's in general like uh, just I. Send random messages to yeah. people that I that I want to to know more about. Right. Yeah. So uh, LinkedIn is a. Uh, I, I don't do TikTok. I don't do much Facebook. LinkedIn is my social. Network. I think it's the best one to do that yeah, type of stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, maybe because I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah. no. I I like LinkedIn probably the most as well. Yeah. I feel like the other ones are more so sending, and I feel like LinkedIn has a bigger yeah. kind of career interactive component to it. Yeah. I'm not a Twitter. Guy, I mean, yeah. I, I use it today. I post it. I got some, yeah. But on Twitter, you get this. Uh, on in, on many social media, you get this dopamine rush. Like mm. I got all, all these likes. Yeah. Uh, so so in a way, you change your message to get more likes. Yeah. Trying to but, play in the yeah, system, but it's it's a trap, right? So it's uh, then you make something just because you want to have this approval, right? So and that's. Not my thing. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm, I oh, approve LinkedIn myself. Is LinkedIn is different. You just share what you do. It's uh, it's more of a forum. I think it's yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's more about and the personal messages are really most important. I, I use it more than email. Okay. More than uh, WhatsApp, of course. It's uh, it's my thing. Good stuff. That's uh, yeah. that's really cool, man. I like that. Yeah. I think to, I should do more of that. You have to build that's your persona. So you yeah, you have to build your persona, yeah. right? So who you are, what you do, and uh, how you want people to see you, right? Yeah. So and then and then you put it out there. But uh, is, is your persona the same you? It should be, no. Otherwise, it's hard. Yes, uh, I, 
most of most of it, of course. Like uh, <laughs> like uh, I post on LinkedIn that um, I'm a DJ, so so we organize parties. Uh, by the way, I have this second life. Second uh, life. It's not a second life. It's, it's the life. Right? Yeah. So uh, so me and my friends we we organize sometimes uh, like. Um, illegal raves in Amsterdam, this kind of thing. <laughs> I don't mind like sharing it, you know, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. Maybe with age it comes like, uh, I don't care what you think of me, this is what <laughs> I am. It's like, uh, if you don't like it. Yeah, you don't okay. like it, yeah. But it, that's, yeah, you, it comes with age. It mm. comes with, uh, with the territory, you know, like uh, the older you get, the less you care the less about you what care. people think. But you do want to be, one person, right? So not not having multiple faces, multiple yeah. uh, personalities. No, it's. Uh, I think I see like I dress uh, <laughs> better. I dress like this because yeah. I dress like this at home, right? So, I like it. Uh, so it's. Uh, I try to be more of myself everywhere, yeah. and it's getting there. So. I think. Uh, I think that's the best way to do it. Otherwise, it's just going to mm. be exhausting. And yeah. it's yeah. some of the feedback I got on this show as well that I am myself on the show and off the show. And I really like that feedback. Like on the moment I was like, yeah, that's, that is true. And in the beginning it was different. Maybe because I was like, oh, the podcast was more new, was more fresh. Maybe I didn't know how to be myself. I didn't really think about it. But now it's just, yeah, it's the same. Hopefully. Hopefully you'll notice it as well. Yeah, I mean, I see. I mean, you don't need to impress anyone. Yeah. Only yourself. Right. I mean, it, it it's a recipe for disaster and unhappiness when you look at other podcasts and I want to, yeah. No. It, Trying to be someone else. It's your success. Yeah. You know, you you measure, you you define it, and you you achieve it if you if you believe in yourself. That's it. So that's uh, uh, in my and in this job in this industry. I mean, there's so many people more successful than you. Mm -hmm. There's this uh, always. Uh, yeah. This imposter syndrome is is everywhere. You just live with it. Yeah. Right? So yes, of course, there's more people successful. Apparently, more success, successful according to their own. Uh, metrics they are uh, doing great but are you doing great according to your own yeah measurement uh, yeah that's uh i try to live by this rule right so uh, only i define my own success and i want to achieve it yeah so. i think that's healthier yeah, and there's a lot healthier. of stuff i mean especially with social media now that might seem like you're not successful but who defines it right mm. it's it's your own measurement and you can change your own you can change your own measurements right if you're happy with what you're doing then why does it matter what everyone else is doing? If you're happy with what you're doing, you should be happy as well. Yeah. Again, stoicism. Uh, so I'm big on stoicism. Uh, the, the, uh, it kind of guides my life. I, it's a personal philosophy, mm -hmm. right? So everything is in your mind. Like uh, how you react to to events. Yeah. It's up to you. Things can happen to you. This is like a background, right? So it's something that happens to you the, the car breaks down or uh, you get fired or uh, or or you win money yeah all these app these are events and the only thing that you can influence is how you react to this yeah external stimuli and that's it this is the old the, the core of choices is that you are in control of your own thoughts and having good thoughts makes a good life yeah so it's a uh, it's again marcus Aurelius, not, not me of course Good stuff. I, I've heard that before, and I've even said that before because I I agree with it, but I didn't I didn't know it came from stoicism. Of course, it originated from there. Yeah, Marcus Aurelius. He was um, fighting a war with the with the German tribes, and he lost uh, uh, children to to illness. Mm. So he, he was the emperor. Yeah. a lot of pressure, and he took the time to sit down every morning, write his own memories. Uh, and to appreciate what he got, right? So the the, the good things that happen in his life, no? So be grateful, uh, appreciate what you have. It's a, it's a great life lesson. It comes from uh, from two thousand years ago, from uh, yeah, from, wow. uh, from a Roman emperor, right? So yeah. and before him, like a Seneca and other philosophers from Greece. So so yeah, it's. I think everybody should have his own personal philosophy. Right? Yeah. So think about life and think about what to do with your life and how do you want to go through life. And I found my own in there, but uh, everybody's free to find your own philosophy. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I might give that a read, or hopefully there's a good audiobook because I like audiobooks more than yes, reading. Yes, no, I'll give you, I'll give you my copy of uh, good stuff. Meditation from Marcus Aurelius. That's awesome. Yeah, I was wondering because I saw on your LinkedIn profile that, I mean, first of all, you've done a whole lot, 
but now you have a DevRel role. Yes. And the the yes. DevRel role to me is very interesting also because it's, I mean, I've applied to a DevRel role mm -hmm. and I, I didn't in the end want to do it because first of all, I'm inexperienced and it was a small team. So I, I would have only the role and it would have been too much unknown, I feel like at the time. Mm -hmm. And second, I didn't really love the product. But the DevRel role is like kind of how you fit in with the organization and really depends on the context and what you're trying to do product-wise, what the business mm -hmm. goals are in that way, which is really weird because it's it's not a role that I would have seen probably 10 years ago, but it's definitely a role that's more up and coming now. Uh, is rising. Yeah. Uh, there is even a DevRel con. I saw that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's one. There was one in Japan. I'm going to speak in London in yeah. September. It's... I, for some reason, of course, companies are realizing that DevRel is a good investment, right? So mm. they are hiring lots of people to do this. Right? Yeah. So they, there is um, it's technical marketing, mm. but there is some something more to it, right? Yeah. So it's it's not okay. just that. No, it's a like a like a it's an act of love. Yeah. So you have to love developers so much that you want to you know help them uh, succeeding through your product, of course. If, if can happen, yeah. but um, but it's a uh, it's very difficult. Uh, not difficult. I mean, you need to have some prop, some qualities, right? So mm. first of all, be nice. Yeah, right? that's that's the first thing. <laughs> that's a, yeah. that helps. Should be an easy one. Yeah, yeah, should be easy one. But you really have, want to help other people, mm. right? So it's a <laughs> it's amazing role. I I quit my job at Microsoft because I wanted to be a DevRel. Awesome. That's the old uh, I thought I'm too young to settle. Yeah. I, mean, I I need to pursue my passion, and I like to do this um, public speaking and uh, help people. So so that's uh, that that's why I joined Solo to be a DevRel. We call it platform advocate now because we we do more about platforms. But yeah, yeah that's uh, the core is talking about technology. And if you are passionate, you are really on a, on a good, <laughs> good track. And um, yeah, it's a, I'm also learning, you know, I'm, it's a role that you have to define for yourself. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Some people like to blog more, some people are the Twitter crowd, you know, uh, but you have to find your way. I feel like as well. Yeah. Which is great, right? So. Yeah, it's so, a, it has pros and cons, right? No one's gonna tell you what to do, but no one's gonna tell you what to do. So there's opportunities and there might be either risks or unknowns and you have mm. to figure that out yourself, right? Yeah. It's it's whatever you create out of it, which sounds really cool. I think you should give it. Uh, I, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know when. I'd like, this is always how I describe it, right? I, I feel like I'm still at the forefront of a lot of things. If mm. you would ask me two years ago, because I was more so new within software engineering, I mean, probably three or four years ago nowadays, uh, I was really interested in the kind of the scrum master role, mm -hmm. facilitating and making sure the process runs smooth because probably yeah. again, because of that team player aspect, right? The base player right. of, of the team. Uh, maybe, yeah. maybe the base player, yeah. Or I was really interested in kind of the product owner role, right? Mm -hmm. Defining where the value is, going there as fast as possible and being in control of kind of the priorities and the business goals there mm -hmm. and facilitating that with developers and development in that mm -hmm. way. That was really my interest at the time, three, four years ago. And nowadays, more so a year ago, I think maybe even two, it started was, I like working a lot with people, right? So I like personal development. I like goal setting as well. I like seeing other people achieve their goals with or without my help, yeah. but with my help especially, right? Giving advice, giving feedback in that way, that really apparently is of value of people. It gives me fulfillment when I see that. So then I, I'm thinking about, okay, more so a team lead role, more so an engineering manager mm -hmm. path in that way. But I've also done this podcast. I love I, public speaking in yeah. that way. Yeah, Content yeah. creation, that is more so the DevRel role. Yeah. Storytelling. Yeah. I think, you, I think you, you you got this, right? So I, I hope so. Yeah. I, my girlfriend says I'm awful at it because she sees then kind of the artifacts of this and she sees me try at home. And I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to improve. That's all. Yeah, that's... Uh, it, it, storytelling is everything. Like that. Yeah. People can... See, you help people if when you connect with them, mm. right? So that's what we tell our kids. Yeah. Uh, connection before correction. Okay. Right? So connection is everything. It's, yeah. it's uh, what makes us humans, right? So, and we connect by exchanging stories. This is how we 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 evolve to to tell each other stories, and that's where culture comes in, right? Yeah. So we create culture by telling stories, and uh, if you can tell story and people can connect to you, you don't put yourself in the you know, it's not your story. It's like how they 
the other people connect to your story that matters. Yeah. It's not like, ah, this, this is how I, how I do it and you should just do this. No, it's uh, um, making, making them feel that you are helping them yeah. because they can see their own struggles in your struggle. Right? That's why we, we always choose when we do meetups or Kubernetes uh, community days, we love to, uh, to, uh, to hear stories from the trenches. Mm. Hey, this is what I did. I made some misp- mistakes. I'm telling you so you don't do the same mistakes. Yeah. It's amazing, right? So it's an act of love for people because you are sharing your story and helping them. Yeah. It's, uh, if you see this in this light, like a connection and love, it's the best job in the world. Yeah, right. Yeah. It, it, that's why it's really hard to me because it, it's because my interests vary mm-hmm. and I feel like there's always a people component nowadays. Yet like you, I would describe myself an introvert, right? Mm-hmm. If I have one of these conversations, I can do I can do a second one. After that, I'm exhausted. When I go to a meetup uh, or even a conference, I'm exhausted afterwards right? because of all the social interactions in that way. So then I'm like, should I do it? But maybe I, I really like doing it, so I should. <laughs> yeah, it, you got this social budget, yeah. right? So yes, maybe now two conversations, you are too tired. Yeah. And, but by doing it more often, and you can have three or four, and then did you feel like it increased? Yeah, yeah, really? it's a, yeah, yeah. Of course, I I like to cut time for myself when I go to a conference. I always take an afternoon for myself. I don't want to talk to anyone. Yeah. Just listen to music. Usually, I explore the city I'm in. Mm. It's uh, the best thing ever. That's awesome. Uh, but on the other hand, it's actually nice to talk to people. These are real people. So this job, of course, code, create, open source, awesome. It's about the people. Mm. The real core of this job, the job we do is people. Yeah. And in the end, like you have to convince somebody to depart from their money <laughs> and <laughs> give it to you for some value in exchange. Yeah. And how you do it, you just tell a story about yourself, about what you do. So it's a, it's a one secret weapon we have, right? Mm-hmm. So if we get better storytelling, the world is your oyster. You, you unlock the potential of uh, of of your, uh, your of yourself. So yeah. When when would you say you got really good at storytelling, or do you even consider yourself really good? No, of course I'm. You're always learning. I'm a. I knew. Uh, that. I knew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I'm a Padawan, uh, no, 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 not a Jedi yet, but uh, yeah, by public speaking. At the first meetups I organized, right? Yeah. Because I was organized, so I have to stay good, get on stage and do, do my thing, thing right? Yeah. So uh, tell everybody some stories and that's uh, that's how I get there. And yeah. I like it actually. It's, uh, it suits uh, you, I feel like. Yeah, of course, uh, don't worry. It's always good, at least for me, I, I don't know if other people, I don't know every, anybody that actually does that, but it's always, always very, um, um, it's very, it makes you very anxious. Like mm. I, I don't sleep the oh, night I before. Yeah, it's it's okay. Yeah. Just embrace it. Yeah. You know, just because you know it's gonna be good in the end. So just go for it. It's, uh, sometimes I just uh, you know jump into it. It's uh, it's be- better, uh, best best strategy, best yeah. tactic. Yeah. Does it still make you anxious? Like after all this time? Yeah. That you've already, yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah, it yeah, never no, goes away, does it? No, no, no. It's, no. it's part of you. Yeah. It's. Uh, I feel like that that makes you really want this. Yeah, I really want to make it in yeah. a in a good way. Yeah, when I when I do public speaking, uh, I read books about. It. So my philosophy is this: so first of all, you owe people that l- in the audience some time. So yeah. they're all there for you. So they invested. You you are now responsible for thirty minutes of their time. Now multiply that for uh, three hundred people. It's a lot of hours. Yeah. Right. So so treat it with respect. Be prepared. Tell a story. I mean, don't don't just improvise. So that's that's the first thing. Give them something that they can take home. No, don't to- talk about yourself. Try to connect with them. It's um, it's very it's, it's how I feel it. Right. So uh, you owe these people some good information, good good story, good talk. Yeah. And that's a uh, it's a responsibility, but it's a, it's a good one, right? So it makes a. Uh, makes me want to do more. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a, I, it's a thing. I really love that perspective. Yeah. And I think it's true. Yeah. And I think so. you also notice it in the audience if a speaker or if a presenter doesn't take it as seriously, you're like, mm. this is kind of a waste, a waste no, of no, my it's, time. Um, yeah. It's, uh, 
literally they are there for you. So first, I also don't get scared because they are there for you. Yeah. Yeah. You are it's on stage. It's also a good thing, right? So it's uh, no one else is there. Yeah. So don't accept uh, to be put down by by anyone. Yeah. Because you, you're there, so you deserve it. So now really deserve it. <laughs> do 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 your part. Yeah. Right? So which With is justice. Yeah, get prepared and uh, do an, make a nice story. Yes. Good stuff, man. Yeah. Cool. This was uh, this was a lot of fun. I must say, I'm gonna enjoy okay. listening back. Maybe to this. one day we'll be colleagues. Uh, maybe maybe we'll one see day you yeah. on stage. We'll yeah. see, man. I I think the world is, especially the tech world, is smaller than I thought initially. Oh yeah. And sure. uh, having done this podcast for as long as we have now, I've met a lot of people, and I think the world is even smaller. So I think it's really cool to be able to build those connections up. Yeah. And probably must be the same for you with regards to the meetups. Smaller but bigger because right? you have more diversity of opinions. Yeah. Uh, I love your show because it's people not don't talk about tech, right? So it's uh, it's beyond tech, right? Yeah. So Thanks, beyond man. Cody. Yeah. So that's yeah. Uh, that's why I all I really wanted to be. <laughs> right? so. I'm really happy to have had you. Is is there anything you still want to share before we round up? No. So well, we have the largest. Uh, one, one big meetup, so we have 3,000 people. We we work on this meetup for seven years. So the Dutch Kubernetes meetup, it's Tsawar uh, Um. So I, I encourage people to, if they want to get involved, I mean, community is a, it's an open space, right? Yeah. So I have people coming, telling me on LinkedIn, of course, ah, I want to do something. I said, just come, organize something. It's a, it's an open uh, open door. Everybody is welcome. So yeah, we would like to have more people actually. I'm a bit tired, <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, uh, if somebody else wants to step in, uh, be extra. We, we it's a team, right? So we yeah. also I want to thank Andy, uh, William, uh, Marcel, and everybody else, uh, Pablo, and I'm sorry, I'm not, not I'm forgetting somebody. My own wife, of course, Meg. Yeah. Uh, also, she helps uh, with the meetup and with the Kubernetes Community Day. So it's never a um, solo sport. I like it's that. It's a team sport, team yeah, effort. So, like. Um, Good stuff. Could not be any. Could could not have achieved what I have with, uh, without the help of uh, a lot of friends and uh, colleagues and uh, people al along the way. So. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Cool. We're gonna round it off here. Then I'm gonna put all Alessandro's socials in the description below, as well as some links to some meetups here and there. Check it out. Let them know you came from our show. And with that being said, thank you for listening. We'll see you in the next one.